Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 2nd, 2017 edition of the Sand and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Nashville, Tennessee. Of course, SMB is still on everybody's mind with the recent denial of service attack adding yet another current exploit to the tool chest that NetHacker may use against hosts running SMB. Now, one thing that was mentioned often when you talked about the WannaCry and such was disabling some of the old SMB versions, in particular SMB version 1. This isn't too hard to do in a pure Windows network where you have active directory control over all hosts but in smaller networks without active directory and also with having other systems like for example Samba servers on Linux systems this can be quite challenging so today we have a diary by Rob telling you how to use Nmap with some recently related NASL scripts in order to detect SMB versions in use on your network. Make sure you're using the very latest and greatest version of Nmap, which is 7.6 and was released on Monday. And I'm teaching here today at the Security Awareness Summit. And of course, phishing is on everybody's mind here. Now, phishing is often seen as an attack that affects more non-technical users, but uh, yes, uh, more technical savvy users like developers are sometimes subject to phishing attacks and fall for it. The latest example here are the authors of CopyFish. CopyFish is a Google Chrome extension also available for other browsers that allows you to extract text from images. So essentially it does OCR. Now the developers for this extension fell for a phishing attack stealing their Google developer credentials and as a result, their extension was taken over by an adware campaign. So if you installed a Copyfish recently and did see all these ads pop up, that's what's happening. At this point, it doesn't look like there was anything more malicious than annoying adware installed. So uninstall Copyfish. At this point, there is no new clean version available. The bad version has been removed by Google. No other browsers like Firefox are affected by this particular attack. And like many modern desktop applications, McAfee's Security Scan Plus uses a web API in order to scan binaries. Now, most of the interactions with this API happen via HTTPS, but sadly, some design elements and ads that are being displayed as part of McAfee's Security Scan Plus do arrive via HTTP. Of course, this allows an attacker with a man in the middle position to replace these ads with additional content. And what makes this even worse is that the virus scan application does implement its own extensions to JavaScript, which do allow the launching of arbitrary commands on the victim. An exploit for this vulnerability has been published, so all the attacker needs is a man in the middle position in order to inject the malicious content. This is really not all that difficult to exploit, so definitely make sure that you're updating your software in order to prevent any attacks. Now, another web application, particular web API tool uh, story comes from Netflix. Netflix, rightfully so, is worried about exploits, in particular denial of service attacks against its extensive API. And in particular, attackers finding slow resource intense API calls and then exploiting them by repeatedly calling them. So what better than to scan your own infrastructure first to identify these critical calls and to make sure that they are properly protected with adequate rate limits. In a nice blog post, Netflix goes over some of these issues that they found in their own microservices architecture, how to identify the attacks. And they also released a testing tool that they call Repulsive Chrisley, which allows you to test your own applications for any weaknesses. 
And Startcom, which is behind the famous Start SSL certificate authority, is trying to get back to be trusted in Firefox and other browsers. Last year, uh, the certificate authority was removed from the trusted list uh, because they were caught backdating some certificates in order to avoid some of the deadlines that were looming for weekly signed SHA-1 certificates. Well, uh, they say they cleaned up their act now and they're trying to be readmitted. They're not really clear if this will be successful, but it looks like they sort of hit all the points required in order to be trusted again. One of the nice features about Start SSL, of course, was the availability of free certificates. And now we have Let's Encrypt now that also hands out free certificates, but the Let's Encrypt certificates are rather short lived and also require that you're using their ACME system in order to retrieve these certificates, while the free Start SSL certificates were more traditional certificates that were valid for a year or two. So you didn't have to update them all the time and you could also use regular means uh, to retrieve uh, the certificate without having to install any special clients. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.